Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, let's talk about Chonzi the Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus was a close relative of T-Rex that lived in Asia. It looked very similar to T-Rex, with a very huge head and a sturdy body, small forelimbs, and thick hind legs. Its hind legs were slightly shorter in relation to its body size, and its tail was about half of its body length. This proportion was typical among carnivorous dinosaurs. Tarbosaurus was very famous, well known for being extremely similar to T-Rex. First, let's take a look at its head, which was huge. We have now found many intact skulls, and these specimens were all slightly different. Some specimens had stubby faces very similar to those of T-Rex, while others had slightly longer faces like this model shows. Therefore, in the early years, some people believed that Tarbosaurus might be the same as Allia ramus, another genus of dinosaurs living in Mongolia. At the time, some theories believed that Allia ramus was the juvenile state of Tarbosaurus because their faces were both relatively long. When it grew into adulthood due to the thickening of the skull, Allia ramus became the look of Tarbosaurus. But we don't think so now, because later complete fossils of the juvenile Tarbosaurus were discovered, and we know that Tarbosaurus was completely different from Allia ramus. Taking this specimen, for example, its face was very similar to that of T-Rex. From the front, we see that it had binocular vision. Some early studies believed that the biggest difference between Tarbosaurus and T-Rex was that its face was narrower, while T-Rex had a wider face. In fact, this statement is half right and half wrong. On the whole, the skulls of most specimens of Tarbosaurus were slightly narrower than those of T-Rex, but not too much. It also had binocular vision, unlike some earlier studies believing that Tarbosaurus could not achieve the same level of binocular vision as T-Rex, but it was not true. As more and more new specimens were unearthed, we know that Tarbosaurus was very similar to T-Rex. Reasons for this early statement were mainly that most Tarbosaurus specimens were deformed due to side extrusion, while many T-Rex specimens were crushed from top to bottom, making its face look wider. So when they were alive, there wasn't a big difference between the facial and body width of Tarbosaurus and T-Rex. Tarbosaurus was very similar to T-Rex in that it had a row of keratinous structures along the top of its eyes extending forward to the nose bridge. Above the eyes, this keratinous structure and the lacrimal horns that bulged from the front lacrimal bone were to different bone structures, but when alive, they were slightly connected. The fossils of some well-preserved T-Rex retained the keratinous structures on this part, we can see that it had a bridge-like structure that covered the top of the eyes and acted as eyebrows, so you can see the yellow part might be connected as a whole like this, rather than divided into two sections. The keratinous structures near the top of the eyes were larger. In addition, Tarbosaurus had thick teeth similar to T-Rex. When it closed its mouth, the upper teeth were outside and the lower teeth were inside. Its upper jaw had a very deep inside so that when it closed its mouth, the mandibular teeth could be fully accommodated, and the upper teeth were exposed. This is also a statement about Tyrannosaur's lips. Such a structure made them difficult to possess lips. We adopted this view when doing the restoration, making its mouth look like that of crocodiles, with the skin directly wrapping the teeth. On the face of Tarbosaurus, there were many large dents regularly arranged around the mouth resembling those of T-Rex. Each dent probably corresponded to a large scale-like structure with trigeminal nerve tissue, which generally looked like this. In living animals, this structure was somewhat similar to this part of the crocodile's face. The structure of the crocodile's mouth is completely different from the structure of its skin. The facial bones of crocodiles are very rough, and no regular pattern can be found on the surface. Many scale structures are formed by random division during growth. But some species of crocodiles have a small structure here, on the jugal bone, slightly similar to those of T-Rex and Tarbosaurus. Then let's take a look at its lower jaw, which looked much thicker when alive, 
because a lot of muscles wrapped the entire lower jaw, making its lower jaw, especially the rear part, very muscular. When its mouth was open, we can see both sides of its mouth, which were generally shaped into a membrane structure in paintings and film and television works, but they were actually two pieces of very thick muscles. Its tongue laid flat on the bottom. Some scholars believe that it couldn't stick its tongue out of its mouth like a crocodile, but kept it stay flat in the mouth, which is like this. Then let's look at its nostrils. Viewed from the skull, its nostrils were about here. But when alive, it might have a large nasal cavity, so the opening of its nostrils would be at a lower position. Therefore, the opening of its nostrils was in a lower position, which could also be seen from the skull. When looking at fossil photos or specimens from a distance, we often see the side of the dinosaur skull has the nasal cavity to be hollowed. Generally, when doing restoration, we limit the nostrils in this hollow area. But in fact, if we look closely at the skull, we see that there are two grooves under the nasal cavity, which are also two big dents. These two big dents sometimes extended as far as the teeth and to the edge of the mouth. When doing restoration, we generally set the opening of the nostrils to these two big dents to make it more downward. In addition, Tarbosaurus had a very thick neck. Its neck had several sets of powerful muscles, mainly a set of large muscles at the back of the head that helped raise the head, and large muscles on the sides that helped swing the head. Dinosaurs needed to use a large twisting force to tear the meat off the prey when eating, so the muscles on both sides of the neck were very huge. Moreover, it had a heavy head, and its entire neck looked sturdy, with two sets of muscles, connected to the coracoids below. Further down, we see its chest. Its chest appeared to be narrower than it used to be in the previous restorations, as did the T-Rex. Because in previous restorations, we often separated the two coracoids some distance apart and placed a breastbone in the middle. The breastbone was a cartilaginous structure. Scientists had rarely found traces of breastbones in carnivorous dinosaurs before, so they thought they all eroded. The two shoulder blades and coracoids were very far apart, and a breastbone filled in the middle. The collarbone was later discovered, which was a small V-shaped bone. Although the breastbone of T-Rex or Tarbosaurus has not yet been found, thanks to the discovery of the collarbone, we know that the two coracoids were close together, they were connected by the collarbone. If we take this index finger as the collarbone, which was like this, and then the two coracoids were connected like this, so we think that the chests of these dinosaurs were very narrow. Then we have a look at its forelimbs. Although Tarbosaurus had short forelimbs like T-Rex, its forelimbs were actually smaller and more degenerated. T-Rex had three fingers. Although viewed from the appearance, there were two fingers, another little one had degenerated very tiny and was close to the metacarpal bones. However, this structure has not been found on Tarbosaurus, so now we generally think that the forelimbs of Tarbosaurus were more degenerated than that of T-Rex, with only two fingers. Proportionally speaking, Tarbosaurus had the shortest forelimbs. Currently, Tarbosaurus was the Tyrannosaurid with the most degenerated and shortest forelimbs. Then, let's look at its torso. Its chest cavity was not narrower than that of T-Rex as we used to think. Many Tarbosaurus specimens show that their chest cavity was as wide as that of T-Rex. From above, we see that it had a very wide chest cavity. Like T-Rex, its pelvis was very narrow, with two iliac bones connected together. Its pelvis was very large, and its iliac bone was about the same length as its head. So we see that its thighs were very wide triangles. Its ischium and pubis were very long and very large, and resembling T-Rex, it had a very large pelvis. In the past, when restoring the dinosaur's belly, we made it into an S-shape for aesthetic reasons, so the early restored dinosaurs looked very slim. But now, due to the discovery of numerous dinosaur gastralia, we know that the belly of carnivorous dinosaurs was round. The current restored dinosaur belly was larger than that of the past. Next, 
we move on to its legs and feet. Tarbosaurus and T. rex had very similar, almost identical feet. From the fossils, it had relatively thin toes, not very large feet, but when alive, it had very large pads that tightly wrapped the entire foot. Assuming my fingers were its metatarsal bones, its pads were longer than the metatarsal bones. This front part of the pad even wrapped a portion of the toenail. We know that the toenail was crescent-shaped, and its lower half was close to the pad, looking like this. It had a pad here, and the toenail grew along the pad, with a long arc, and the end was worn out due to walking. So we see that its toenails were relatively flat and blunt. Since the little finger inside did not touch the ground, and was rarely worn, this toenail looked sharper. The soles of its feet had very delicate small scales. The pads of its feet were very thick. Based on the footprint fossils of T. rex, we restored its pads like this. Then, let's look at its long tail. Starting from the second half of the ilium, where the middle of its long tail connected to the muscles below it. The ilium was about here. The end of the ilium connected to the muscles in the lower half of the tail. A group of muscles in the upper part of the tail extended from the back. This piece of muscle contained a large number of tendons, forming a very strong suspension bridge-like structure that allowed the dinosaur's tail to be swinging high in the air. In addition, let's look at the scales of Tarbosaurus. At present, we have found many scale fossils of Tarbosaurus, which clearly shows that there were a lot of scales on its tail, larger than those of T. rex, but not very much. The scales were more regular and they were very neat and fine. Although they did not form a regular pattern, the size of each scale looked similar, and they seemed to be arranged neatly, unlike T. rex, which had many irregular shapes. The scales of Tarbosaurus were hexagonal or pentagonal, and they were arranged relatively finely. Some previous articles suggested that large scales had been found on the throat or under the body, or on the shoulders of Tarbosaurus, with some large bumps growing on the small scales. Since these materials were too early to be confirmed, some of the photos quoted in some latter articles may be based on misinformation, not the most original material, and then we talk about its skin color. As for the skin color of Tarbosaurus, no one has done any research about it, because no melanosomes have been found in its body. So we can only speculate on its skin color. The color scheme we made for this model is based on the opinions proposed by some experts in the exhibition on tyrannosaurs that I cooperated with the American Museum of Natural History in 2018. They believed that as a large animal living in swamp, Tarbosaurus might have had a body color close to black and white. So when designing its color, we followed this principle and designed its color to be very dull, like gray, without fancy colors. But on its head, such as the eyes and nose, it had keratinous structures, which often have a relatively bright color, so we made it bright yellow, for the identification. Good, the above concludes our introductions to Tronzi the Tarbosaurus. Thank you all. Thank <laughs> you.